Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second part of the lecture on qualitative methodology. And in this part of the lecture, we are going to look at rigor in qualitative research. All right, rigor is quite commonly emphasized in quantitative research, well as it is somewhat less emphasized in the qualitative research. But here I want to bring your awareness that in qualitative uh, research, we should also try to design our research as, rigor as rigorous as possible. If you are very, very new to this concept and um, um, you may not know what rigor means uh, here in the research method field. So rigor, it refers to a, it's like a scientific um, manner, well as it refers to a construction of the design, how valid the design is. Let's say you have designed a questionnaire for your research and we need to make sure that um, people who participate, who participate in your questionnaire should be a representative sample and uh, you probably understand that I assume and we try to cover as maybe as much as possible at, or as balanced as possible of, uh, from different sample groups um, who can represent the population that you want to study. So that is a very typical rigor uh, concept in a quantitative research. Well, as in a qualitative research, we usually have a very small sample, as we discussed in the first part of the video. And in a very small sample size, it is hard to be rigorous, isn't it? It's very hard to have a balanced sample or to have a representative sample because we are just focusing this very, very small amount. For example, for your dissertation that you are going to do for your master's program, and um, if you're using a um, method like interviews, quite possibly your sample size is around 10 to 20. So in this small sample, it's very hard to have a representative sample and it's very hard to be, to have a balanced sample and let's say you want to if you want to study HR managers so it's or hey even if we put it like HR managers in the UK there are thousands and thousands of HR managers in the UK and if you only interview 10 of them it's very hard to say that the view that you have um, captured from these 10 um, HR managers would represent the views from the rest of them, isn't it? Since a very, very, since it, it is a very, very small sample size. Um, but here in this session, I want to emphasize that even for a small sample sized qualitative research, you should also aim for a rigorous design. You should try to be as scientific as possible. Okay. And there are a couple of concepts um, in, the, in the area of rigor. And uh, here are uh, four concepts that I want to introduce to you. These four, you would also see them in a quantitative research. Um, and here I want to first introduce uh, what they mean and then talk about some of the applications in the qualitative research. Okay. Um, these four dimensions of rigor, 
The first one, external reliability. This one is usually quite um, be quite it can be easily and um, kind of mixed up with the second one on internal reliability. Well, as the external reliability is more on the replication, so whether a research design is repeatable, replicable, or repeatable. So let's say you have you have designed um, a set of um, interview questions, or you have used an um, interviews in your research, and whether another researcher, another quality researcher to be specific here, can conduct the same interview as you have done, you know, um, can they repeat the design that that you you have put there? Okay, that's about repli replication or repeatability. And um, well, as the second uh, dimension, internal reliability is about the result of your research, whether the result of your research would be consistent or not. Okay, let's say in the first dimension, which is about whether the design, your research design is replicable. So let's say, yes, it can be replicable. So other researchers can also follow the same procedure that you have designed and can ask the same questions that you have designed. And then after they have finished their, um, you know, data collection, in when it reached to the the actual result of of the data, whether they can get the same result. So that is about the second dimension, internal reliability. Whether they would get the same answers if they also interview the same type of people that you have interviewed. Okay. And um, and. The third dimension, internal validity. Internal validity is about the relationship between data and theory um, within your research. The data and, and theory. Whether your data would actually reflect what your theory has suggested or whether your data would actually refer to reflect to the theory that you have generalized okay so that's the 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 kind of the a relationship between your data and the theory so a good or a high internal a valid research and um, should be that the data and the theory are consistent so let's say if if your conclusion says your data suggested such theory and it should be the case if um, if this if your research is a high uh, internal um, validity type of research so basically it means your conclusion is, conclusion is true or valid here the third sorry the fourth fourth um, dimension external validity and um, that refers to the generalizability of your finding so let's say and um, in your research your findings suggest the data would reflect on such theory and and if it's only within your research that is the internal validity well when we are trying to look at whether the finding from your research can be applied to an outside context. So not only your own research, but also to a wider context. Let's say your research is, is look at one particular company and whether the finding from this particular company, which is, you know, within in this internal validity and um, you want to see whether this finding can be applied to other companies 
in a similar context, let's say uh, other companies which are also in small, medium size, or other companies which are in the same industry of the company that you are investigating, or even even a wider wider context. You don't have to risk or how far the restric restriction could be in terms of how far your finding can be generalized to others. Okay, so that is about the external validity. So it is um, concerned about how far the findings within your research uh, frame can be applied to other field. Okay, so that's external validity. And these four dimensions um, should be applied to both um, qualitative research and quantitative research. Um, so the important message from this part uh, of today's lecture is that rigor is not only a quantitative um, methodology concept. In qualitative research, we should also try to be as rigorous as possible. We try to design our um, research high in reliability and validity and you know, as you can see here and uh, as we just discussed there we try to be high in each dimension of the rigor okay um i hope you uh, can understand rigor in the qualitative research and um i'm going to see you in the next part where we will talk about sampling sampling in qualitative methodology see you there